So this is part four of a rather messy overview of magnetic fields of transatom spin nucleide electronic condensate uh, from G.D. Mashinsky. Uh, and so uh, this is part 10, results and discussion. So his proposal above, uh, he's saying the electron pairs of the transatom and the trans molecule are as close as possible to the nucleus so that their wave functions overlap significantly with the wave function of the trans nucleus. This leads to a significant increase in the rate of electroweak processes, so uh, proton to neutron, neutron to proton, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, in transatom, there are always free electron states for the population of B electrons formed as a result of electroweak interactions. In the transformation to transatoms, the electronic structure of atoms change uh, uh, and changed significantly. Uh, he talks about the uh, energy levels. Transatoms are attracted to each other. This allows the simultaneous interaction of many transatoms and accordingly many transnuclei. The formation of a nuclear trans molecule automatically leads to the convergence of nuclei to the distances of the action of nuclear forces and the beginning of nuclear transformation processes. processes. Thus, the probability of nuclear reactions becomes equal to the probability of the transformation of atoms into transatoms. Owing to the release of considerable energy in the process of transmutation, the ordinary stable nuclei emitted from the trans molecule and the capsule capturing electrons are transformed into ordinary atoms. Okay, so he's saying, um, I shall indicate here only the conditions under which the transmutation reactions take place in the trans molecule. Trans atoms in the trans molecule are surrounded by a cloud of electrons paired in bosons with S equals 1. The wave functions of the electrons overlap significantly with the wave functions of the nuclei that make up the trans molecule. Trans atoms are constantly on the move as positively charged trans atoms try to push each other out of the trans molecule. Negative electrons return them back to the center. A self-balancing field arises. At the center of the trans molecule, the magnitude of the magnetic induction vector is 10 to the power 6 to 3 times 10 to the power 9 tesla. The magnetic field changed the nuclear structure of the nuclei, splitting the energy levels of protons and neutrons in the trans nuclei. Trans atoms in the magnetic field of trans atoms and trans molecules are oriented and polarized. The magnetic fields in the centers of the trans nucleus and in the centers of the trans molecules are inhomogeneous. Uh, and anisotropic. The inhomogeneity of magnetic field is 10 to the power 2 uh, to 10 to the power 6 tesla on the core diameter. So it's it's basically not all the same from every angle. It's uh, some um, kind of anisotropy. In the molecule, electroweak transitions in the transatoms are realized between the ground states. This is due to the fact that energy released during the transitions is distributed between the transatoms and not emitted by the electromagnetic method in the form of gamma quanta. So this is his explanation uh, for why you're not seeing gammas coming out of these uh, nuclear low energy nuclear reactions. Okay. This is just beautiful. You're going to love this. Some possible applications of transatoms. The possibility of realizing non-radiative nuclear uh, reactions without large energy costs has been discovered. Conversion of some elements to others uh, makes it possible to obtain rare elements and their isotopes from cheap elements, including obtaining super heavy elements and possibly supercharged nuclei. There is also a way to eliminate radioactive waste by converting radioactive isotopes into stable ones. Isolation in the process of transmutation of intranuclear energy makes it possible to create energy generators of a new power type, powerful, compact, and radiation-free. Since transatoms are spin and magnetic, they can be used in computer technology, for example, quantum computing technologies, and he goes on to describe why. It is possible to create various devices based on uh, materials with a low density, but with a huge magnetic fields, both constant and variable. This is just 
astounding, really, uh, really amazing, the, the potential here. There is an opportunity to create materials with record strength characteristics using a TAM in the structure, since the energy of the bond between them is much greater than the energy of any chemical bond. So you could create materials that basically are light and very strong and impervious to chemical attack, because the chemical attack is not sufficient to actually <laughs> break up the, the, the sort of hybrid bonds. Mankind receives for its own disposable, additional to the existing table of Mendeleev, many other chemical trans elements. So if we confine ourselves to nuclei with charges from 2 to Z equals 100, then the number of trans atom chimeras, without taking into account the Lorentz subshells, will be 2,500. This reveals the enormous perspectives in chemistry, material science, industry, medicine, communications, and the development of new sources of energy in the military field. It is difficult to foresee what possibles can be realized using spin matter. Spin interactions at any distances uh, and the torsional interactions associated with it. And then in his conclusion, at present, a new fundamental and global direction in science is being formed in the scientific world, transatomic, transnuclear science in the condensed environment. The direction is global since it affects practically all natural sciences, physics, chemistry, material science, electronics, biology, and others. The basis of this direction is the discovery of previously unknown state, a previously unknown state of matter, the spin nuclei electronic condensate, yeah, he abbreviates to SNEC. SNEC is an altered state of the atomic and nuclear structure of chemical elements. In this state, the physical and chemical properties of, chem of chem chemical elements change. For example, trans elements are attracted to each other, forming molecules with new properties that differ from those of ordinary molecules. The atomic nuclei of chemical elements in the state of SNEC can enter into multi-nuclear reactions. A feature of these multinuclear reactions is the absence of radiation as they proceed and the absence of radioactive isotopes in their products. The most important feature of the transatomic uh, transnuclear science in a condensed medium is the immediate application of their properties and behaviors in the latest technologies in all spheres of human activity. Thus, the development of transatomic transnuclear science in a condensed medium the study of the properties of spin nuclide electronic condensate and its applications in industry is the basis for a new scientific and technological revolution. So I think uh, essentially Mashinsky has given explanations to why all these uh, phonon uh, triggered systems seem to be uh, producing Lenner reactions. Uh, he gives guidance uh, effectively on uh, why titanium and deuterium and helium and so forth uh, play a role and why nickel is. Um, and if you actually go back to that table, you, you can start to think about, uh, where is it here, um, why different things occur. So, for instance, we were finding hafnium and uh, um, terbium in uh, uh, the reactor um, from Lion, uh, in Lion 2. Uh, was it really half term or half neum and a terbium? Don't know. That question was open. But when you look at where half neum and terbium is, it's like uh, half neum is here and uh, a terbium is over here. So it's kind of like adding uh, two Z charges. It's like adding a, a transhelium to it, um, uh, producing those two. But then potentially why you wouldn't get tungsten is is that... Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's dropped down this kind of shell configuration, so it can't support enough uh, electrons. So if you're starting with tungsten, you might drop back. And uh, what happened in the um, uh, sapphire reactor is they put in a tungsten probe and they think they observed hafnium and uh, terbium, or certainly a, a terbium, uh, I think they recorded. It's interesting that hafnium and the terbium appear to be observed in... Um, uh, the data that uh, uh, Parker Wolf is going to present tomorrow. And, and so uh, th this is very, very interesting. Uh, th there may be some sort of threshold um, that gets triggered around here where you have to push it much harder to, to, to go up the, the table there. So there's lots and lots uh, to think about. And uh, I welcome your questions um, that I hope to be able to put to Mashinsky. Thank you and enjoy the translation.